System of a Down, a band now synonymous with heavy music, around the world, transcending languages and cultures. The band's rise to fame was quick, but their disappearance was anticlimactic. It would take years to give us an explanation as to what was really happening behind the scenes. All those years ago in 2006 when the band went away, it was classified as simply a break, a much needed hiatus after years of extensive touring. It wouldn't be until over 10 years later that we learned what was really happening behind the scenes back then. Through interviews, news reports, and public statements, the members of the band have each begun telling their perspective as to why System of a Down hasn't been able to release a new album in more than a decade. And through this information and research, we're taking a look today at how one of the most beloved bands on the planet has somehow let the years go by as their millions of fans around the world wonder what might have been. If you're new to Rockfeed, we publish daily hard rock and heavy metal news videos right here on YouTube. Feel free to subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss out on breaking hard rock and heavy metal news. The System of a Down story began unbeknownst to two future bandmates as kids at the Rose and Alex Palibos Armenian School in Los Angeles, California. There, future singer Serge Tonkian and guitarist Darren Malakian attended the school together. As children, they didn't know each other due to an age difference, but would eventually join forces in 1992 to start another band named Soil. Coincidentally, both musicians were working on separate music projects at the same recording studio. It was a chance encounter that would later go on to define hard rock and heavy metal history. Vocalist Serge Tonkian was born to Armenian parents in Beirut, Lebanon on August 21st, 1967. He eventually moved to Los Angeles with his parents at the young age of seven. Musically, Serge was actually a bit of a late bloomer. He didn't begin writing music or playing instruments until he was accepted into the California State University Northridge. It was there where he began forming his musical foundation that would eventually make him an international recording artist. You can trace System of a Down all the way back to 1992. After that chance meeting in the recording studio, Serge and Darren Malaki informed a band named Soil in the LA area. Serge and Darren both handled vocals with Serge on the keyboard and Darren naturally on the guitar. Together, the two musicians were taking their career quite seriously. It was there when they decided to take things from the hobby level to more of a professional standard. Serge and Darren decided to hire a business manager to handle their day-to-day -day operations. They needed someone who could work behind the scenes, booking shows, and their various other business dealings, seeing as they were new professional musicians. They eventually decided to hire a man named Shavo Odajian to handle their daily business affairs. While their new manager, Shavo, was navigating the complicated LA rock scene, Serge and Darren liked him so much, they actually made him an addition to the band. This sealed what would later become the first three members of System of a Down, Serge, Darren, and Shavo. Soil was merely a trial and error phase for what would eventually become System of a Down, not so much musically, but mainly with the personnel. The band performed local gigs in the LA area, but unfortunately didn't attract major label attention, which led to the guitarist and the drummer of the band to eventually quit. Ironically, it's been said that when they left the band, their reasoning was because they felt the group wasn't going anywhere. Determined to see their musical vision come to life, Darren, Serge, and Shavo were not ready to see their dream die. Seeing as their band Soil had broken up, the musicians needed to come up with a new name. It was at that point that they turned to a piece of poetry put together by guitarist Darren Malakian with the creative title, Victims of a Down. Serge and Darren believed that was a good name for the band, but it was Shavo that talked them into changing it to System of a Down because the word system would reportedly appeal to a wider audience and place them closer in the catalog to their musical heroes, Slayer. So there it was, the new beginning they had hoped for. Now all they needed was just some new music. And early on, there was a recurring theme of unreleased material put together by System of a Down. In fact, there's reportedly two entire EPs that went unreleased before they leaked onto file sharing networks following the success of their massively popular album Toxicity back in the days when people were still using Napster and Kazaa. The first demo put together by the band was later given the illustrious title of Untitled 1995 Demo Tape. 
In early 1995, System of a Down members were still performing as the band Soil. They were making the rounds live, which is something they've always seemed to enjoy to do. They were relentless live. They repeatedly hit the Sunset Strip with clubs like the Viper Room and the Whiskey A Go Go, having them on repeatedly. It was after working diligently and putting themselves out there that they caught the eye of famed producer Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin's worked with everyone from Slayer to Jay-Z. He wanted to take this new band under his wing and give them a shot at the fame they were seeking. Maybe the fame they didn't know they were seeking. Now that the guys in System had their man in Rick Rubin, they were ready to impress record labels. After all, Rick Rubin had the connections needed to get this band a deal. If Rick Rubin was a mobster, he was a made man in the music industry and could essentially get this band any deal they wanted with his blessing. So there it was. System of a Down began working on their demo for labels. By this time, it was their fourth actual demo, but for real this time. This was the one they were creating to show labels what they were made of. And it was intended to be private as well, but as these things would go, this one was also later leaked onto the internet. After the band finally put together their fourth and final demo, their plan came together. Hard work paid off, so to speak. It was their man that had heard word about this heavy band on the Sunset Strip, Rick Rubin himself, that signed them to his Columbia imprint. And soon thereafter, System of a Down was in his studio recording what would later become their debut self-titled album. Things were looking up for System of a Down, and they would soon take over the world. But as fame tends to do, it comes fast, and it's not something that everybody was necessarily prepared for. Some members seem to enjoy the fame a lot more than others, and it was the spotlight and particularly creative differences that would drive this band apart. System of a Down almost immediately became a mainstream success, with their single Sugar and Spiders gaining widespread airplay on MTV. The band capitalized on that success, touring around the world in support of marquee acts like Slayer and Metallica. System of a Down toured non-stop and then entered the studio to work on their follow-up to their highly successful debut album. Once the album was completed, the band wanted to do something special for their fans, who catapulted them to fame around the world. It was then on September 3rd, 2001, where the band decided to unveil the new album at a free open to the public concert in a parking lot in Hollywood. The band expected about 3,500 people to show up to the free gig, and they had accommodations in place to make that happen. But unfortunately, System underestimated their popularity, with a whopping seven to 10,000 fans showing up to this concert, overwhelming security in place and leading law enforcement to shut down the gig unexpectedly. The cancellation took place just before System were expected to take the stage. There was no announcement made to the crowd, which led them to become quite upset. Fans waited in the crowd for more than an hour, not knowing that the show had been called off. After the extended wait time, crews began taking down the large banner behind the stage, which infuriated fans in attendance. It was at this point where chaos began to take hold at the show. Fans rushed the stage and destroyed an estimated $30,000 of System of a Down's touring equipment. A near riot occurred. People were throwing rocks at police, breaking windows, and even knocking over porta potties. Reports stated that the incident lasted six hours and six arrests were made. Regardless of this incident, System of a Down's album Toxicity released to critical acclaim. The record debuted at number one on the American and Canadian charts. The new album dropped on September 4th, 2001 just days before the catastrophic 9-11 attacks. The devastating 9-11 attacks led to a point of reflection in the United States. Though despite that incident, System of a Down's album still was highly successful. The band continued pressing on. It was the following month in October of 2001 where a shocking incident occurred during a system gig in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Bassist Shavo Odajian claims he was attempting to enter a backstage area with two women, where the bassist and his friends were attempting to watch a portion of Slipknot's set. After trying to regain entry to the backstage area, Odajian claimed in a lawsuit that he was harassed by the security guards. Odajian claimed that he was attacked and suffered, quote, serious personal injuries and damages including his face, nose, eyes, shoulder, back, and he was caused to suffer pain and bleeding in his nose 
For long periods of time, the report by MTV stated that he was given medical treatment by police and arena personnel on the night of the alleged incident. The report states, in the suit filed in Kent County Circuit Court, 28-year-old Odajian claims that a guard working at the Do Hadway Kendall security elbowed him in the face and forcibly dragged him out of the Van Andel Arena during a concert on October 20th, 2001, according to a copy of the complaint. Just a few months after System of a Down released their highly successful Toxicity album, a new wave of songs made their way onto the internet. But unfortunately, this came without the approval of the band themselves. The songs were actually unreleased tracks that were written and recorded for System of a Down's album Toxicity. But the songs were so widely circulated that the band needed to come up with a plan. They eventually released a statement saying that the songs were intended for Toxicity, but released finalized versions, which later became their third album, which was ironically titled Steal This Album. Between 2000 and 2003, System of a Down worked nonstop, and while some members of the band were okay with this, there were other members who were worn down and wanted to do their own thing. Particularly what we now know is that Serge Tonkian was not interested in making the Mesmerize or Hypnotize double album that was released in May and November of 2005, respectively. Before we get to some of the issues that eventually led System of a Down to break up for several years, it's worth pointing out that the band had a marquee year in 2005. They reached a massive milestone that few musical artists in the history of music have ever actually reached. They were in very good company. The band remarkably released two number one albums in the same year. It was a testament to their fans, and they were in very good company. Only the Beatles, Guns N' Roses, hip-hop artists Tupac and DMX had ever achieved the same feat. In May of 2006, the band announced they would be separating for an undisclosed period of time, but noted it would probably last several years. As we now know, System of a Down members have been embroiled in a dispute that has left them unable to release new music due to a combination of creative and financial differences. Odajian made it clear that this was not a breakup between members of the band, but looking at it in the past, it does seem like it was at least partially a breakup. He said at the time, we're not breaking up. If that was the case, we wouldn't be doing this Ozfest. We're going to take a very long break after Ozfest and do our own things. We've done System for over 10 years and I think it's healthy to take some rest. Rumors of an album never ceased, but the band remained mum for a number of years on why we hadn't heard new material from System of a Down. It wasn't until 2018 where members began contradicting each other in the press and publicly telling their side of the story about what led to that separation. In the press at the time, the members made it sound like it was just time to take a break and rest. But years later, they're telling a very different story about a group of friends who are still close to this very day but see things very differently from a business perspective and creatively as artists. In fact, guitarist Darren Malakian has painted his frontman Serge as someone who isn't really necessarily a fan of heavy music. In a July 2018 interview with Revolver, guitarist Darren Malakian said, as of right now, it's not looking like we're doing something together soon. I can't close the book on it and say it's done forever. We still play live, we're still all friends, but there are some creative differences as well on what direction each one of us wants to take the next System album, if that ever happens, which is fine. I'm not sitting here upset or anything. The only thing I'm a little frustrated with was waiting for that to maybe happen or not happen. In a follow-up interview with Kerrang, Malakian pointed the finger at Surge as the one he felt was responsible for the delay in content. He said, I don't want to throw Surge under the bus. He's my friend and he's someone that I care about but I don't know how to change his mind. We've all sat down and we've had meetings and he's totally set in his way of thinking. He added that quote, Serge was never really a heavy metal or a rock guy. I don't know if he has the same love for this kind of music as I do. I'm the kid that grew up with Slayer and Kiss on my walls. Serge didn't grow up feeling that way. He didn't grow up a diehard fan. So I feel like the whole experience of becoming the lead singer in a hugely successful band was different for him than my experience was for me. In a surprising revelation, Darren revealed that Serge wasn't even interested in making Mesmerize and Hypnotize. He said, To be honest with you, Serge didn't even want to make Mesmerize and Hypnotize. We really begged him to make those records. At that time, he felt like he was out. Darren's interview was widely reported and quickly went viral among fans. 
For some, it was a confirmation that the long-awaited system of a down album that they had hoped for was never going to be on the way. For others, they were outraged that one man in the band could hold up such an important project. And for the man in question himself, he was ultimately concerned about his own safety. Not wanting to be solely to blame in the eyes of fans, Serge took to his official Facebook account to offer a detailed, brutally honest breakdown of what led to their separation for all those years and why we haven't heard new music from the band in the decade or more that followed. Serge released a statement titled Confessions About System of a Down by Serge Tonkian. He said, We're extremely lucky mofos for our fans to want a record out of our ragtag misfit of a crew after all these years, at times demanding it. This of course has led to numerous rumors about the band and our inability to make a record together coupled with he said, he said excerpts from each of our interviews in the past and present at times by sensationalism seeking media who are in no way, let's say, changing the world for the better themselves. So I'm going to attempt to clarify things for all of our sake once and for all, hopefully without vilifying anyone in the process. It is true that I and only I was responsible for the hiatus system of a down took in 2006. Everyone else wanted to continue at the same pace to tour and make records. I didn't. Why? For numerous reasons. One, artistic. I've always felt continuing to do the same thing with the same people over time is artistically redundant even for a dynamic outfit like ours. By that time, I felt that I needed a little time to do my own work. I wasn't discontinuing restarting the process with the band later. Two, egalitarianism. When we first started out, our creative input and financial revenue splits were close to equal within the band. By the time Mesmerize and Hypnotize came out, we were at the diametrically opposite end of both with Darren controlling both the creative process and making the lion's share of publishing, not to mention wanting to be the only one to do press. 3. I wanted to leave the band before Mesmerize and Hypnotize for these developing reasons. This is why I personally don't feel as close to the music on those records. There were songs I wanted to bring in, but was hampered by unkept promises coupled by my own passivity at the time. Time went by, we did our own thing, my solo career gave me the confidence as a songwriter and later composer to revisit System of a Down from a position of strength at first just to tour and enjoy each other's company, which we did and still do. I knew they wanted to make a record, but given the past I was hesitant. At times, there would be emotionally tinged outbursts by one band member or another, mostly blaming me for the band's inactivity. After a long time thinking and processing, about two years ago, I went to the guys with a proposition for a way forward as a band. I wanted to rectify the wrongs of the past and establish a way we can be happy moving forward, so I recommended the following. 1. Equal creative input. By this time, I had released five of my own records and was a better songwriter musically, and Darren was getting better as a lyricist. So I said, let's each bring in six songs that all band members approve fully and work on them along with songs or riffs from Shavo. Two, equal publishing split. I personally feel that a band is an equal partnership and finances should reflect that. Three, director's cut. Whomever wrote the song makes the final decision after exhausting all types of ideas from anybody within the group. I did this because in the past, I'd bring in a song that would be morphed into an undesirable version that I myself would withdraw from consideration. 4. Develop a new concept or theme so that it's not just a record but a full experience. Obviously, I'm omitting many other details here like agreeing on the sound of a new record which we couldn't do either as we went back and forth with songs by Darren and myself. I remember sending lots of notes on songs to Darren mostly from his current Scars on Broadway record, most of which I didn't consider applicable to System of a Down. They played around with some of my songs, suffice to say, I think we tried. Ultimately, I had to draw a line in the sand because I knew I could never be happy going back to how things used to be within the band. And as we couldn't see eye to eye on all these points, we decided to put aside the idea of a record together for the time being. My only regret is that we have been collectively unable to give you another System of a Down record. For that, I apologize. Thanks for reading. Peace, Surge. Speaking in recent interviews, the sentiment among System of a Down members is that nothing has really changed. The bandmates are still friends, and Surge Tonkian is perfectly content performing live. But otherwise, they just don't seem ready to pull off the band-aid on those wounds 
and finally come to a compromise that will give fans the long-awaited album they've been so patient for. While we examine what led to this lengthy hiatus, separation, or breakup, or whatever you want to call it, it's hard to imagine that System of a Down members, who were so hungry all those years ago when they were performing as Soil, could have ever dreamed that things would turn out this way. On one hand, they're extremely successful and sought after, but on the other hand, they've been in this weird place for more than 10 years where they can't come to an agreement on anything new pertaining to the band. Virtually every other member other than Surge has gone on record saying they really want a new album to happen, almost pleading publicly with their bandmate to give it a shot. And while these public statements offer a glimpse behind the curtain into the world of System of a Down and the disagreements that have led to this hiatus, there's likely still more to the story that we don't know. If it's really about money, why can't they just make everyone equal and get on with it? And even if they did that, could they come to a place where they could even agree creatively? There's so many hurdles for System of a Down to overcome before we may ever hear new music from them. But one thing's for certain, their music that we did get from them will live on forever. That's all for now. Be sure to check out these recommended videos. And you can see episodes also on Slipknot, Corn, Puddle of Mud, and more by subscribing to this channel with notifications on so you don't miss out on breaking hard rock and heavy metal news. Thanks for joining us today, and we hope to see you around very soon.